Hi, I'm Mike Ponson. I'm the guy who killed your cyberpunk character. Oh, you had it first. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> That's a squirt gun. I love it. Yeah. Not a real gun. Yeah. No. Hello, everybody. It's Caroline here from PC Game Den, and it is the last day for me of Gamescom. But I am incredibly lucky to be joined by the one and only, the incredible Mike Ponsmith. How Excellent. are you, sir? I'm really not Mike Ponsmith. I'm a live body double, but wow. we shifted me in as a replica. Yeah, because the other one was so busy, right? So we had to yeah, get you yeah, in. But you're, but you're pretty good at this, so I'm sure yeah, we're going to make it work. I've been cloned carefully to be able to achieve this. That's perfect. And for Excellent. anyone that, that doesn't know who, who this, this clone is, uh, he created the original Cyberpunk game, which is phenomenal, and it's going to be so cool to hear about your input on CD Projekt Red Snake on Cyberpunk 2077. All right, I'll do my best. All right. OK. So the first thing I want to ask you, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure you're going to get asked this a lot, but Keanu Reeves obviously is in Cyberpunk 2077, and that yep. is awesome. What has it been like for you to work with him on, you know, on becoming Johnny Silverhand? Uh, actually, I haven't met him yet. Have you not? Uh, no, no, we've always been on opposite coast or at different times. Uh -huh. So I've met him, but sooner or later, I figure the trap I've set will bring him in. Yeah, and then you won't let him go. No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to let him just hang around. We're going to hang out, you know, yeah. play bass, do something fun, you know. Yeah, I'd like but, to see that. But seriously, yeah, it's actually been really a, a crack up because of, they didn't immediately tell me at CDPR what, you know, who they'd gotten. They said, we have an actor. And uh, they said, well, we don't know. He's not blonde, uh -huh. but he can play guitar. And I said, okay, well, you know, that's fine. Yeah. So, you know, well, who you got? Well, I can't tell you. Well, I'll tell you, you get to Warsaw. So you can tell you straight away. So they wouldn't tell me. So I went uh -huh. to Warsaw, I went to spring on me. And poor Amelia had like been planning this for months, I guess. <laughs> So we're sitting in the hotel in Warsaw that mm -hmm. night, and my wife's our business manager as well, looks over and she says, it's Keanu Reeves. <gasps> and I'm going, nah, nah, <laughs> that's, that's way below his pay grade, you know, mm -hmm. no way. And uh, besides, you know, he's never gonna do cyberpunk stuff again. Okay. So. And she's going, no, it's Keanu Reeves. And I'm going, okay, right. So we get to City for you the next day. Uh -huh. We're hanging out. And Amelia's going, so before we tell you everything, you know, tell you who it is, yeah. would you like to take a guess? Yeah, did you and guess? And I'm sitting here and I'm going, well, I mean, and Lisa says in the back, she says, it's Keanu Reeves, isn't it? <laughs> and poor Amelia's face kind of falls. You're like, how, how did you know? And I go, she's got a superpower. I don't yeah, know what it yeah, is, but she can do that, yeah. you know? And she's going, dark hair, plays guitar. You know, yeah, it works out. Yeah. So we went in and checked out his mocap and a lot of the other stuff. It was great. Yeah. Um, the thing about it is when you create a character in a paper or a book situation, you see a mental image in the back of your head, of course, but yeah. there's nothing really solid because mm -hmm. it, it's mutable depending yeah. on what you see in the scene, what has to happen and so forth. And it was amusing. I'd always kind of thought of Johnny as roughly looking a little like David Bowie, but well, mm -hmm. he's a bit long in the tooth and not alive anymore. Sadly, so, yeah. But Keanu worked out really well because yeah. he got across the essential element of Johnny, yeah. which is, in the end, Johnny's not a person you cross. Yes. And Johnny's kind of out looking out for Johnny. Mm -hmm. You know, and the only person who's ever gotten past that is Alt. Yes. You know, one of the things that cracked me up was finding out that the crew with CDPR when I met them, shift Johnny and all. It was like, oh, that's so cute. I have fanfic. <laughs> but I think you're right, though. I mean, Keanu Reeves can really kind of make this character his own while still kind of staying true to, you know, mm -hmm. these, these things that make him him. Yeah. So I, I think everyone's really excited to see. Well, I mean, we saw I, it in the demo, but to see how that's really going to translate I, throughout the uh, game. Yeah, I've, I've seen a bunch of things in it since because of the mocaps and of course. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about your your tabletop game a little bit, right? So, right. so, so the timeline with that was something between you, know, like the eighties, nineties, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, it was, you know, it wasn't too long, it wasn't too long ago, right? Okay. But now the video game is set so much further into the future, right? Twenty seventy seven. Mm -hmm. So, what was the decision behind that instead of kind of sticking to what you kind of previously looked at before? Well, one thing, Cyberpunk twenty twenty would be really silly coming out in Cyberpunk twenty twenty. <laughs> and I but did have a, fit, I did have a few years, you know, yeah, yeah. in between. Okay, so part of that is, I'm gonna look at you, I have to actually get my knee around That's here. That's fine, it's fine, get comfy, okay. get comfy. Uh, comfy, nice sofa. Yeah, basically, um, we had a choice. We could try to split things off and do a different timeline. Uh -huh. But as it happened, I had already begun working on 
what happened after the 2020 period. Okay. The way cyberpunk has always been written is as kind of a long sequential novel or um, think a comic book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Spider-Man has history and he goes through that history. And likewise, we always look at cyberpunk as like, there's an age, this happens, there's a period and this happens, yes. so forth. And we were in the middle of a period we call the Red Period, okay. which was going to be what happened after the war. Yes. And the Fourth Corporate War was very, very carefully planned out by myself and uh, my buddy Dave to basically get cyberpunk back in the box. Yeah. Uh, people had all fought our Asakin one, people had gotten all the hardware they could get, mm -hmm. they had done everything they could do that was interesting. And we said, okay, it's now stale and stodgy. Yeah. So we wanted to change it. And a war is a good place to, to change things. It does shake things up a bit, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, we patterned off of World War II Europe, mm -hmm. and we looked at it as what would be a limited war. And then we basically started tearing things down with an eye towards keeping technology Okay. but not making it as easy to get changes in the yeah. technology. Yeah. So for example, um, my favorite example of that is cell phones. Yes. Okay. To make a cell phone requires getting gallium and other rare earth metals from like Africa uh -huh. and shipping it around halfway around the world to some factory somewhere that processes it in China and they make your phone and they ship it around the other half of the yeah. world and they distribute it to a bunch of stores and the stores in turn sell it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, if that ship, however, is uh, sunk or otherwise interdicted by two warring corporations and it can't get from A to B, that gallium doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So no cell phone gets made, right? Mm -hmm. So, so much for, you know, your your new uh, Samsung Note 52. Not <laughs> happening. Yeah, well, accurate with the numbers there, I think. Right. Well, for the time. Yeah. But here's the thing. Uh -huh. uh, one of my favorite statistics was 3 billion, no, 2 billion, correction, uh, cell phones were made last year. Really? Yes. Staggering number of cell phones. It's huge. Huge amount. Do you know anybody in this building who probably doesn't have a cell phone? No. No. And most people have two these days. Of course, business and a, and a home Right, home. I have four. So oh, that's, wow. It's a long story. Very busy man. Uh, no, I'm not as much busy as I also uh, go to environments where my phones have to survive, so they have titanium. Oh. It's a long story. You would like a sat phone? Uh, more like a sat phone, right. Nice, okay. But that's my other life in paleontology. Mm -hmm. Going back to it though, the thing is, if there are three billion or two billion cell phones out there, yes. that means there are going to be cell phones. Yes. It's not like just because I can't make new ones, there won't be cell phones. There will be a lot of cell phones, and that's every year. Mm -hmm. So that means I can get a cell phone whenever I need to, but it will be not the best model, catch as catch can, mm -hmm. and it will have fewer bells and whistles, and the cell phone technology will not expand much in all that time. Yes, yes. Until somebody finally unmines the harbor, raises the ships, gets all the gallium over, um, builds the factories, da 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 da, da the rest of it, yes. and they can then rebuild the technology. So what this allowed us to do was to keep 2020 level technology, mm -hmm. but it was technology that was not gonna progress very far in the next 10 to 20 years while they rebuilt yeah. the factories and restructured infrastructure, and built new mega courts and a whole bit. So it would be familiar, but there would be a reason why things had been dropped back and hadn't progressed very far. Mm. People are still putting their lives back together. Yeah, of course. So when we allowed for that, and I had worked this out before I even met CD Projekt. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we were able to go, oh, well, you know, we know what happens during this period between the end of the war in 2023 and 2077, which was kind of an arbitrary date. It's far enough out there that yeah. you know, no one's gonna yeah. expect, yeah. you know, we won't be alive to see it, right? So what that meant was I already had an answer for that and I could progress further and Cyberpunk Red, which is the current iteration we're working on yes. at Artel Sorian, talks about that period. It talks about how everything got rebuilt, how the nomads helped reorganize things, how corporations restructured, mm. all the changes that eventually lead to the Night City that we get in 2077 all over again. Yeah. So, it's a work of progressive fiction. Yes. And it works better because 
if we started from an alternate timeline, we have to justify what changed, what didn't change, mm -hmm. you know, what character went back in time to change the time. No, never mind. The, the upshot is we would have to justify too much. Yeah, that makes sense. This way, you have access to an enormous amount of lore mm -hmm. that we have built over the years. Yeah. And you can reference that and you can turn people who are potential players onto that so that they can learn about the world even before they play the game. And we've had a great deal of success with that. My uh, social media guy, Jay Gray, he specializes in a section he does for Reddit and so forth called Cyberpunk, 365 Days of Cyberpunk. Uh -huh. And he talks about the lore and how it relates to not just 2020, but all the way forward in 2077. And at first people went, oh, that's weird. But then they started looking forward to it. And they yeah. went, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Maybe that'll be in the game. Yeah. And even if it isn't, now I know how this came about. Yeah, which helps, of course, because I'm mm -hmm. sure there'll be, there'll be so much more contained in the game. And of right. course, it helps to go beyond that and right. learn so much more about the huge immersive world it's going to be. Right, and then Patrick Mills over at CD and I have spent a ridiculous amount of time on the phone, the internet, trading information to make sure that those timelines all add up yeah. and become unified. Yeah, because you know someone will do that digging and find out if it's not. <laughs> yeah, we've discovered they will find yeah. anything. They probably knew what I had for breakfast last yeah. week. Yeah, well I know what you have for breakfast last week. That was like, really? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't healthy. It's a weird choice, it's a weird choice. Yeah, it wasn't healthy. <laughs> okay, so talking about time for instance, we were just talking about how the difference between, you know, if we did 2020 or all the way now to 77, could mm -hmm. you maybe give us some of the, the key things that have happened in that time? leading us to where we are now. Ooh, now we go into spoiler land, don't no, we? I know. Okay. I had to ask. I did. Actually, some of it has been discussed in our most recent product, uh, the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. And the Jumpstart is kind of giving you a, a simple version of that timeline all the way up to about the 60s. Okay. The 70s are where pretty much CDPR begins to pick it up. But since we trade data back and forth, they're fairly unified. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest picture of what's going to happen coming up is that in the 2020 period, the corporations ruled, they had control, and they had built that control out of a collapsed world. Mm -hmm. And so they were on top. The war blows that apart. And the reconstruction period, people start taking it back. They yeah. get the hope that they can actually control. Yeah. So you have people moving back to the deserted cities. You have the nomads coming in off the plains and now becoming the transportation kings that help the new societies actually work. You have new corporations instead of the old. For example, right. you know, if you don't have Arasaka, there's gonna be some kind of security company coming so, up. Oh yeah. yeah, Yeah. one goes down, another noise pops back mm -hmm. up, right? And here's where the footage abruptly ended because the camera decided to turn itself off. Happens to the best of us, it, it really does. Anyway, it was awesome chatting with Mike Pondsmith. He's made me even more hyped for Cyberpunk 2077, if that was even possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about what is going to be one of the biggest games of 2020. As ever, subscribe to the channel for more, and thank you so much for watching.